Hey guys, welcome to the part 2 of JavaScript tutorials for Python developers. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about list, dictionary, function, and classes. And I'll show you how to write all of those in JavaScript. Okay, um, in Python to store a sequential data, we use list and tuple. Uh, JavaScript, on the other hand, has an array. Okay, um, Python list and JavaScript arrays are mostly similar. Um, JavaScript doesn't have a immutable list uh, called tuple in Python, but that doesn't exist in JavaScript. But array can act like you know, array is pretty flexible, right? Um, they uh, list in Python and array in JavaScript also can act like a stack queues if you want, meaning you can you can do push and pop, and it follows um, last in uh, first out uh, concept. Okay, um, all right, so let's write some code, shall we? Um, quickly going to my terminal here. So this is how you define uh, array in JavaScript. Um, so in Python, to push a new element, we would use append. In JavaScript, we will use push. Um, I'm going to add six in here, and this is my new array. I can I can do pop and like I said uh, last in first out concept uh, the six would be removed from from an array um, in Python to find out the length of a list I'll use len function in um, in JavaScript pretty much everything is an object uh, so array object has uh, an attribute called length I can just call that to find the length. Um, and the slicing works pretty much uh, in a similar way like in Python, but the syntax is a bit different. Um, let's say if I want to get elements from zero index to third index, I would use a slice. So in, in here, um, so the slicing will start from zero index. So it will start from one and then it will get the elements um it will get the elements up to third index so zero one two three four uh the, this is what happens in python as well so in python i do the same thing as um we don't have to use um zero if we are starting from the beginning but we can if we want and then if i do four yep that's what happens okay um and the other thing is dictionary uh, dictionary represents a hash table as uh, we we as most of you guys already know um, so the way you so JavaScript doesn't have like a terminology called dictionary um, so they, they have a they have an object um, which can act like a dictionary if we want okay um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to store uh, information about person uh, and in this case the gender would be male height um, I don't know let's make it I don't know 171 172 person um, now to get a value of the object we, we would um, call it like that um, you can also append a value to the object or dictionary um, um, new and test yeah there we go guys pretty much uh, works like the same way in Python and the other thing is a function definition which is a bit interesting okay um, so this is how we define function in Python. As you guys are expert in Python, you guys might already know this, right? So in JavaScript, uh, I will define the function with a function keyword. So this is how um, we define function in a you know in a old version of JavaScript. Now now you might see a new uh, way of defining a function like um like this so fun 
function. Okay, uh, note that this needs semicolon at the end because the declaration here itself is a statement. Okay, um, um, and the way you would call the function in JavaScript, it's the same thing, but like like in Python, if you try to call if your function has an argument, uh, actually I'll, I'll show you guys. Uh, it will be a lot clearer if I show you guys. Uh, so let's say uh, this function will accept an argument called name and I'll just print it out for now. Nothing fancy, right? Um, nothing fancy going on here and this is how I call a function but I can call my function without an argument and the JavaScript will, you know, like uh, will, will not complain at all. So if I, there we go. Um, so well, what I get back is undefined because of course the name is not defined, right? In function, uh, sorry, uh, in Python that won't happen because um, Python needs a positional argument if you have defined positional argument while defining the function. Uh, if you want the same behavior in Python, you have to use a keyword argument. Um, yeah, just to, just to note that guys. And the last thing is classes. Uh, so classes is a pretty interesting one uh, because uh, remember I told you guys about ECMA uh, version five of JavaScript that uh, got released in 2009, I think. Um, and a new version came in 2015 called ES6 and that, um, and that version only um, introduce classes in JavaScript meaning there is there were no classes in JavaScript before uh, in JavaScript everything and everything is an object okay um, when they introduce classes in ECMA 6 uh, they did not um, you know like rewrote everything or introduce a new language feature anything like that it was just an abstraction of a of a function because in JavaScript every object has a hidden internal property called prototype and that can be used to extend the object property um, so you can use that prototype to add in methods and other attributes to your function so that's what they did in ES6 so remember if uh, if uh, you know if you are writing a code for a browser that doesn't support ES6 you might not want to use this uh, you can easily get by by just using a normal function but if you want to use classes you can also um, write your function you know in a in a way uh, to add you know like attributes and things like that um, so let's uh, let's see how it works okay um, so okay uh, I will create a class called car um, and then it will have two properties for now brand and type Brand can be anything from BMW to Tesla, and the type can be electric or, you know, like gas or whatever. Um, this is the type, it goes to type. Um, I can also um, write a method um, like this. Scream, and let me just print out something for now. Car brand is Actually, I, I really like this uh, syntax of JavaScript um, that you can, you know, happen the string inside a string like this. This is type. All right, done. Now, now this is how you will call your class. Let's, let me get rid of this. Um, new car Tesla electric and let's call the method like that okay there we go guys um okay so that's how you you write classes and then and then assign an object and then call the property of the class um so you might want to uh, check out if you are able to 
use ECMA6 in, in the browser or whatever you are using. Yeah, have a, have a look here guys and then, and then see if, if the environment you are using supports that as well or not. If you are on Node, you might want to have a look here. If you, if you are supporting mobiles, then you want to have a look here. And then if you, if you want to have a look at the browsers, then have a look at here. Um, Alright guys, that's it for the JavaScript series. Um, please like, share and subscribe. It will really help the channel to grow. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Cheers.